Okay, we're going to do an example here of an inclined plane. And so let's imagine that we have an inclined plane here, and we have an object sitting on the inclined plane uh, of mass m. Let's say that the mass is going to be 4.88 kilograms. And let's say the inclined plane is 66 degrees. Okay. And so I want to know, in that case, what would be the acceleration of this mass if it goes down the incline? Well, we know from before that your know, free body diagram, okay, this has mg, we have normal force, and that's about it. Okay, so this component of mg is balanced exactly by the normal force, so what's left is mg sine theta, and that's going to equal ma, so the acceleration is just going to be g sine theta, so 9.81 meter per second squared times sine of 66 degrees. And so in that case, the acceleration down the incline will be uh, equal to 8.96 meter per second squared. Okay. Well, the shallower the incline, then the less the acceleration is going to be. The steeper the incline, the bigger the acceleration. Well, let's, let's go a little further here. Okay. And let's say that we've got this pretty steep incline here, 66 degrees. We've got this mass right here, you know, same mass. So this is 4.88 kilograms. But I have an additional force tension here. And I want to pull on that so that I'm holding it so it does not go down the incline. And so I want to know what is that tension so that it does not go down the incline. So the acceleration is going to be zero. And so what is that going to be? And so I look at that and say, well, you know, free body diagram. We got mg. We have the normal force and we have the tension. Okay, now. Under the conditions of acceleration is zero, this is equilibrium again. So if we're un, if we're in equilibrium, that means the sum of the forces is zero. So that means if I put my my coordinates like this, so this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis right here, then I would say, okay, that, that this has to balance this component down here, and then the Fn up here has to balance that component. Okay, and so that means that, that if I want the acceleration to be zero, then the tension has to equal mg sine theta. And so in that case, we plug in our numbers, and that's going to be 43.7. Newtons. Well, if there's no friction, if I am pulling this thing up the incline at constant velocity, so acceleration zero, that would mean that, again, I would need that. Well, turns out that that's an interesting thing because if you were to look at just mg, what would mg be? It'd be 4.88 times 9.81 and that would be uh, 47.9 newtons. So that's the weight of it. So I'm actually having to put less effort into pulling it up the incline than I would if I just picked it up and lifted it. So again, this is a mechanical advantage uh, that we have with, with incline plane. In fact, if my incline plane had been shallower, so if, if, this, if this had been like 20 degrees, then the tension to go up the incline would have been mg sine theta. And so in that case, uh, uh, it would be 16.4 uh, newtons. Okay. Now that's a big deal because that means that... Uh, 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 that 
we we're only have 16 newtons and uh, and uh, 16.4 newtons and we're pulling up almost 48 newtons weight object so this is again a mechanical advantage so these simple machines the pulley and the incline plane allow you to magnify the effect of your force of your work okay well let's go back here to the steep 66 degrees 4.88 kilograms i have a tension but now what it, what i want to have happen is then i want this thing to be accelerating upwards at 1.31 meter per second squared and i want to know what tension permits me to do that well free body diagram we get mg going down we got the tension we have the normal force okay i'm going to say this direction is positive because that's the direction of my acceleration so sum of the forces equals ma so the force in the positive direction now, now again the normal force is exactly balancing this component of the weight okay so the tension minus mg sine theta because this is mg sine theta right down in there okay and so that has to equal ma okay so that means the tension is going to be equal to m a plus g sine theta after we do a little bit of algebra and that comes out to be 50.1 newtons okay so that would be the, the the tension i would need to pull upwards to make it go up with that acceleration so the next question just to be complete here 66 degrees 4.88 kilograms i still have a tension but i want it to be accelerating downwards at 0.75 meters per second squared now we know it's going to accelerate way faster than that if i just let go so i'm going to be lowering it down accelerating downwards so this tension is not going to be as big as it would be you know just to hold it so it'll be less than it would take to hold it so free body diagram we always whenever you have a a force problem do a free body diagram so we got mg we got tension we got the normal you know again my, my axes are going to be like this okay and so this would be my x-axis my y-axis you know the accelerations this way so i don't like minus signs so i'm going to say that direction is positive okay so this is in the positive direction the tension to the negative direction so mg sine theta minus tension equals ma so the tension is going to be m times g sine theta minus a okay and so the tension turns out to be 40.1 newtons okay so here are several examples using the uh inclined plane now very important Students often do not appreciate this. Draw a free body diagram. Any problem, it helps you to draw a diagram of the problem and how it's set up. Okay, because that way you engage the visual part of your brain, you understand. Second, draw a free body diagram like the politician view zoom in on the one and only object you're interested in and draw it label the forces that are on it label the direction of any acceleration label what direction is positive and negative now actually what i would normally do um, in in class on the whiteboard i can't do this on this computer i'm using to to produce this but what i would normally do is 
I would use different colors to indicate all these these things that right here. I'd use one color to indicate the axes, another color to indicate the direction, the acceleration, and third colors to indicate the forces. Okay, this is a really good idea. There, there's reasons that your textbook uses colored photos and colored diagrams. There's re reason that so many engineering reports have diagrams that have colored things. It helps you to separate out visually one part of the diagram from another. This is seriously a major help. And so uh, go ahead draw the free body diagram. Uh, it would be a good idea to draw the different parts of it in color. So go ahead, get a, a little box of matte pencils or color pencils or something so you can draw everything in color. Yeah, I know. It's going to be even more pages for the homework. Uh, it's going to be more pages, you know, to do this stuff. It's going to make, make it take longer to do on tests. Do it anyway. Cause it's good for you because it actually makes it easier to see things and makes it less likely that you will make mistakes. It's good for you because it's going to help you. It's going to help you get better grades. It sounds silly, but it really does help. I've been doing this for a lot of years, and I know that this is a strategy that helps. So always draw a picture of the diagram of, of, of the, the basic setup. Draw a separate free body diagram focusing on each object and the forces acting on it and label things in color because that really does help.